Hey, good morning and welcome to Ridgewood Church of Christ. Welcome to those of you watching on RCC Home Church. We are glad that you have chosen to worship with us today. My name is Brandon Chenault and I am the Worship and Creative Arts Minister here at RCC. Although, as you can tell, I'm not at RCC today, but I know that you are going to have a great day of worship and growth today. And so we are so glad that you have chosen to worship with us today. Uh, as we begin our time of worship, I've got a few announcements for you. First of all, just want to remind you that on the second Tuesday of every month, we have our night of prayer and we have been doing that on Facebook and it's just been a great time for us to pray together, encourage each other, um, give our praises. And um, so this coming Tuesday, September the 8th, we're going to encourage you to join us at seven o'clock on Facebook Live for our monthly night of prayer. Come with your prayer requests, your praises, and um, come just ready to encourage each other. We're gonna have a topic that we'll talk about and we just encourage you to um, just come and, and interact with us as we um, communicate back and forth and then as we close our time out with some prayer together. And next, I just wanna remind you that next Sunday, the 13th, we're going to have our worship as one. We're gonna have one worship service together at 1030 in the gym and then there's going to be a meal following that. Maybe you haven't come back to live worship yet, we just want to encourage you maybe to come back on that day, worship with us, and um, then like I said, we're gonna have a meal that's gonna be provided following that service. That's next Sunday, September the 13th. And then finally, on October the 4th, for six weeks, there's going to be an RCC University parenting class, and we just encourage you to check back for more details. There are gonna be more details to come on that. And so as we um, just begin our time of worship, I pray that you have a wonderful day today, and uh, let's just worship together. Thanks so much, Brandon, for that. Uh, we hope that you're having a great time on the beach. We miss you here, but we're getting ready to worship God anyways. And so let's do that, and let's give God praise for the great things that he has done. Let's sing this together. our King. Come let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. And see what our Savior has done. And see how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. of heaven you conquer the grave you free every captive and break every chain oh god you have done great things we dance in your freedom awake and alive oh jesus our savior your name lifted high oh god you have done great faithful through every storm and you'll be faithful forevermore you have done great things yes you have and i know you will do it again for your promise is yes and amen you will do great things and god you do great things Oh, hero of heaven, you conquer the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. You conquer 
conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken the light. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great things. You have done great things. Oh God, you do great things. Hey, good morning, RCC Home Church and RCC In-Person Church. Thank you all for being here and worshiping with us on this first Sunday of September, and we hope you guys are going to have a very good Labor Day weekend. Psalm 59 was written in a time in David's life when the future king of Israel, when the anointing was no longer held in high esteem. But there was a time in David's life when the anointing was held extremely high. People would see the presence of God just flowing from David's life. In fact, his worship to God alone could drive demons away from King Saul at one time when he would worship before the king. Remember when David stood before Goliath and when the entire Israelite army was afraid, David was not afraid. But David entered a season of his life when the anointing was no longer held in high esteem and his public presence was no longer appreciated among the people. I think that's very much like we see today with the Church of Jesus Christ in America, where the presence and the anointing and the history and the spiritual prosperity that God has brought to us, to this world, it's no longer seen among the people here in America. Even the words of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ, is no longer seen as anointed before them. We are no longer held high in America. The public presence of Jesus Christ and His people are no longer appreciated. You know that because you see what's taking place in our culture and you really understand how dangerous it can be right now to have a biblical worldview of what's taking place today. And what used to be called the glory of God is now called bigotry and hate and racism and white privilege and we are labeled with so many names that there's no basis for the reality of those names. Here's the setting for Psalm 59 that I want us to talk about today. You can find that actually in 1 Samuel chapter 19, verse 8. And this is what this says. There was war again, and David went out and fought with the Philistines. And he struck them with a mighty blow, and they fled from him. The anointing of God is in David's life here. You have to see that. The, the anointing is right here with David. And it's always been there. And in the church of Jesus Christ today, you and I might fall, you and I might stumble, you and I might make mistakes today, but there is really no taking away the anointing that God has given to his church today. The presence of God is still with you. The presence of God is still with me. The presence of God is still with this church as you and I move forward in this world. In 1 Samuel chapter 19, verses 9 through 12, here's what it says. Now, the distressing spirit from the Lord came upon Saul as he sat in his house with his spear in his hand, and David was playing music with his hand. Then Saul sought to pin David to the wall with a spear, but he slipped away from Saul's presence, and he drove the spear into the wall. So David fled and escaped that night. Saul also sent messengers to David's house to watch him and to kill him in the morning, and Michael David's wife told him, saying, If you do not save your life tonight, tomorrow you're going to be killed. So Michael let David down through a window, and he went and he fled and he escaped. And it's in this context that you and I are going to see what David writes in Psalm 59. And here's Psalm 59, verses 1 through 9. Here's what it says. Rescue me from my enemies, O God. Protect me from those who have come to destroy me. Rescue me from those criminals. Save me from these murderers. They have set an ambush for me. Fierce enemies are out there and they're waiting. Lord, though I have not sinned or offended them, I've not done anything wrong, yet they prepare to attack me. Wake up, see what's happening and help me. O oh Lord God, heaven's armies, the God of Israel, wake up and punish those hostile nations. Show no mercy 
to wicked traitors, that they might come out at night snarling like vicious dogs as they prowl the streets. Listen to the filth that comes from their mouths, their words cut like swords. After all, who can hear us, they sneer. But the Lord, you laugh at them. You scoff at all the hostile nations. You are my strength. I wait for you to rescue me. For you, O oh God, are my fortress. America has been a country in the past that has been founded on religious freedom. Can we all agree with that? Our laws have been based upon the words of God. Let's admit it, we've not been perfect. We've had a lot of flaws in our lives and we've done a lot, made a lot of mistakes in America. But we've always had this willingness to hear from God and come back and be connected to His truth. The church has had the history and has had a history of spiritual awakenings. Think about the songs and the poems and the prayers and the articles and the preaching that have been spoken in this nation for the past 240 plus years that has been based upon God. Today we're living in a time when the testimony of Jesus Christ and His church are surrounded by those who want to take it away. <clears throat> Let's just admit it. They want to do away with God, and they want to do away with the testimony of Christ. This isn't even really up for debate in this day and age in 2020, and it's getting worse every single day. So we find our, ourselves literally falling on our knees before God, asking God, what in the world can we do? How can we fight against all the evil that we see taking place in this world? And we see it taking place all over, from the institution of marriage redefining marriage, redefining the definition of family, to race, to, to whatever they want to throw into that. We are finding ourselves in a generation that's terribly similar to what the children of Israel went through in Egypt and in their day. Because if you think about this, you know, think about this. Our young people today are being thrown into the rivers of confusion. Think about this. Gender confusion. Of all things, gender confusion. And this is deliberate. This is a deliberate thing to pull your kids off track. Confusion about if they're male or if they're female. Think about that. If you're male or female, this is a layup question. You're either male or you're female. Confusion about does God actually exist? Does God love you? Does God care for you? Our kids can't even pray in school anymore. They can't even say the Pledge of Allegiance in, the, in school anymore in some of the schools here in America. And if presidential candidate Joe Biden has his way, he would like the Islamic faith to be taught in all public schools. Not God's holy word, not Jesus Christ, not the gospel of Jesus Christ. He wants the Islamic faith taught to your children. Folks, there's a deliberate move to pull us away from God in the faith. Most colleges and universities are being used to radicalize your, your young people against God and against this country. This nation is just about to tip over and go the opposite direction than what it's been going for the last 240 plus years. Right now, godlessness is replacing God. Evil is replacing good. Good is replacing evil. Folks, we are at a tipping point. We're, we're no longer there. We're no longer heading for this. Folks, we are right there at the very top, and we are starting to go over the edge. You have to believe that. So, Here's what God's going to do. God's going to give us a refuge for a very short time to reconsider all of our ways, to turn back to Him, to pray to Him, and to literally seek His will and His face and His direction and what He wants us to do. In James chapter 4, verse 8, it says, Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts. Your loyalty is divided between God and in this world. You cannot divide your loyalty. Your loyalty goes one way. It only goes toward the God of this universe. We come to God, and you know what we do? We stop our boasting and our pride. We stop it. We come to God and say, God, we, we've literally failed you. We're not as strong as we pretend that we are. We have boasted. We have had these big voices, and we've had our own plans in your church, and yet the nation has been sliding away from us while we've been doing all this. David knew the history of God, and he knew the power of God just like, I guess, you and I would know the power of God. 
He, we know about the great spiritual awakenings that have taken place in the United States of, the, in, of America, especially in the 1850s, that great awakening that swept through this country where hundreds of thousands of people came to Jesus Christ. And this all started with just a few, sh- a, a small group of people because they were concerned about this nation and they started to pray. Even though our present generation and a lot of our government leaders like to deny that God is in our history, it's there. Our country was founded literally upon God and the freedom to worship Almighty God. Like David, when a great great threat came to him, guess what he did? He went into seclusion. David actually went into seclusion to protect himself and to protect his life because he was afraid. Now, I'm just going to talk pretty hard right now if you don't mind, and I want you to listen to me. This is what the church of Jesus Christ is facing today. Many people, God's people, even before the virus, spiritually went into hiding. We spiritually went into hiding. And since the coronavirus, COVID-19, I'm just going to tell you, many of God's people are so afraid, they're still in hiding. We still can't get people to come back to church. We still can't people to trust God, to do what God has called us to do. Folks, we are literally caving under the pressures of this day. And many Christians are afraid that they're going to die. Many Christians are afraid of what their future is going to be. They're afraid because, you know why? We haven't had to be a warrior church. We have not had to, in this day and age, put our feet firmly upon the Word of God and to literally fight back and be a warrior church. Can I just say this? We have been soft. We have been lazy. We have been apathetic. And many Christians have been raised on false doctrines and marshmallows in the house of God. So we find ourselves fighting against this darkness. We find ourselves fighting against social issues. And we forget that you and I have an armor that is available to us through Jesus Christ and the power of His Holy Spirit. Remember, we just went over, put on the full armor of God so you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. And you can only do that by the power of God's Holy Spirit living inside of you. But it's not just Christians, but there's a lot of preachers today who are covering, craving, caving under the political pressures of this day. They're redefining things of God that they shouldn't redefine. They're redefining marriage. They are calling good evil and evil good. May God help any Christian or any preacher today who is caving under the godlessness of this day. May God help you. May God help you today if you are caving. And what will happen to you when you actually stand before God on Judgment Day? How are you going to answer that? How are you going to answer when you have caved under the pressures of this day? I want you to listen to Revelation chapter 22, verses 18 and 19, and here's what he says. If anyone adds anything to what is written here, God will add to that person the plagues described in this book. And if anyone removes any of the words from this book of prophecy, God will remove that person's share in the tree of life and in the holy city that are described in this book. If you add something to the word of God, you got to answer for that. You got to answer for that. If you take away and you don't present the full gospel of Jesus Christ or you have tainted it or you have skewed it or you've watered it down, you've got to answer for doing that. And yes, even if you are not a preacher or you're not a teacher because of your life, you have watered it down. So how in the world are you going to get around that? Seriously, it's a serious question. How in the world are you going to get around that on the day of judgment? Did you know that David, in his place of compromise, ended up standing on the wrong side. Think about that. He ends up standing on the wrong side. He wants to preserve himself. He made an alliance. Are you ready? He made an alliance with the Philistines, and he ended up on the wrong side of the battle, fighting against the army of God. I cannot even fathom that. My mind has a hard time even wrapping around that David fought against the very army that he fought with. David is opposing the side that he once stood for. It's like a Christian or a teacher or a preacher today who knows what God's Word says and we end up on the wrong side going against the Word of God. How in the world does that happen? I mean, how in the world does a person literally get into that spot? 
How does a person or a Christian get into that spot? Or how did David get into that spot? Other than David is trying to preserve himself because he's afraid and you and I do the same thing. Let me ask you this. How far are we willing to go for the sake of the truth? How far are you willing to go for the sake of the truth and the gospel of Jesus Christ? Are we going to live our lives afraid? Are we always going to be cowering in fear behind closed doors and live to preserve ourselves in this culture for one more day? Or are we going to rise up Is the church of Jesus Christ going to wake up and fight for something that is a little higher than just being comfortable in self-preservation? Folks, it is time for you and I to have a different mindset than this world. And it's in this place that David found the hand of God on him again. And so can you if you're living in fear. And you know what happened? Here's what happened to David. It caused the Philistines and the Philistine leaders to reject David. They literally kicked David out. Because of God, they started to reject him. So David goes back to his hometown and finds out his hometown has been destroyed by the enemies of God. Now here's David. I want you to get the picture. You ready? Here's David. He's the great king of Israel. David, the great psalmist. David, the great songwriter. David, the one who could drive demons out with his songs for King Saul. David, who faced Goliath. David, who defeated a lion and a bear. He now finds himself in a place of weakness. And he is only there by his own compromise and his, only, and his own fear. And he has no strength to literally go forward because he is cowering in his own strength. I want you to listen to this from 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6. Here's what it says. David was now in great danger because of all of his men were bitter about losing their sons and daughters. Yeah, I bet they were. And they began to talk of stoning him. But David found strength in the Lord his God. And it's in this moment of weakness. Now listen to me. It was in this moment of weakness that David turns to prayer. How about that? Now listen. David finds out something, and here's what he finds out. He finds out that God had answered a prayer that he prayed in Psalm 59, and that's where we're at, and that's what we read a little bit today. Today, for all of you who are here, and for those of you who are watching, there might be prayers that you've prayed a long time ago that you have forgotten about, and maybe God's answering those prayers right now. Maybe he's going to answer that prayer a month from now or two months from now. You may have thinking that God has forgotten, but I'm telling you, God has not forgotten what you have brought to him. David prays this prayer in Psalm 59 when things are terrible. Things are literally bad. And when David comes to the end of himself, he literally begins to pray again before God Almighty. And he sees that God has started to answer his prayer. There are some here today or maybe watching who feels like that you have no future. You have no future. You feel weak. You feel like there's no hope. You're, you're afraid. But maybe today some of you have forgotten that a year ago, six months ago, maybe even five months ago at the start of a coronavirus, you prayed a prayer to God to give you strength. You prayed a prayer to God to lead you and to lead you your family. And you got to remember When you start praying to God and He starts working in your life, there is a journey, there is a process involved in that. you got to give God time to work in you and through you and around you. And sometimes we can get our minds into ourselves to think that God has forgotten us, that God is not listening to us, that God is fed up with me or that God doesn't love me or that God can never use me again in the kingdom of God for the things that I've done or the things that I have been involved in. But let me tell you something today. Stop downplaying what God can do. Would you? Stop downplaying what God can do in your life because if you do that, you've just blocked everything that God will be able to do. Every person that God uses today, you, me, whoever else, it's all grace. All of it. It's all grace. Here's the thing today. God does not want or He does not need your natural abilities. Did you hear me? God doesn't want or need your natural zeal. God doesn't need anything that you have to offer Him. Do you know what God needs? God needs a willing vessel. God needs an open heart. God needs open hands that comes to His throne and says, God, I have no plan. 
I have no plan but you. God, I have no strength but your strength. God, I trust in your plan. I trust in your will. I trust in you. So God, I offer my body to you for the purpose of you and your spirit living in me. Give me your power to do what you want me to do in my life. That's where we need to be. Psalm 59, verse 10. In his unfailing love, my God will stand with me. Now, David didn't know that when he wrote those words, it was going to be a long journey. Like for some of you and for me, when we pray sometimes, it's a long journey. But he needs to realize and he's going to figure out that God is literally standing with him through all of his trials, through all of his weaknesses, and through all of his mistakes. He finds that out, and I'm sure you're going to find that out too. And in our weakness today, in our weakness as a church age, in our time of compromise, in our softness in American religion, in our bad doctrine and our theological focus in preserving ourselves as opposed to giving our lives to the sacrificial life of God in our lives, in our weakness, God can meet us. But you've got to allow Him. You've got to open yourself up. You've got to self Stop self-preservating, putting the walls up and allow God to penetrate what needs to be penetrated in your life. Psalm 59, verse 11, it says, Do not slay them, lest my people forget. Scatter them by your power. David's prayer for his enemies were like, God, don't kill them. Slay them. Don't slay them. Scatter them. Just disperse them. Get them out of the way. Psalm 59, verses 11 and 12. And bring them down, O Lord, our shield. For the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them even be taken in their pride and for their cursing and their lying in which they speak. Folks, there are so many voices today that you hear and I hear that are not true. So many voices. They're all over the place. All over. And some of you believe the lies right and left every single day. You're lapping it up with a fork and spoon every single day. You believe one lie after another and after another and after another. No wonder we're afraid and no wonder we're in hiding and no wonder we're not moving forward. I don't know about you all today, but I'm tired of Hollywood and their voices and their godless voices. I'm tired of the media always lying and misrepresenting the truth at all turns and corners. I'm tired of our government leaders who are godless, and they mislead us, and they lie to us, and they twist Scripture. I'm tired of these people. I'm just going to tell you, I'm worn out. They've worn me out. I am tired of these people. I am weary of their pride. I'm weary of their cursing. I'm weary of their lying. Every day we look at people who have no concept of the truth of God because the truth of God does not matter to them and even the truth and the facts no longer matter. There's no right and there's no wrong today. That's why it's so important that you and I stand upon the truth of God and do not be shaken from that. And David's prayer is, God, don't slay them. Don't slay them, scatter them. Scatter them, bring them down because they have raised their voices against you and they are filled with pride and they are filled with arrogance. And David's talking about those people directly who are trying to mount a full attack on him. And there are people today who are gathering to take away the testimony of God's people. They're gathering together to take away the influence of the church of Jesus Christ. They are gathering together to take away the gospel of Jesus Christ. Satan is using all these people to take away the voice of God. And these people have gathered so that you and I cannot gather in the future. Folks, do you understand exactly what's taking place here today? This is no longer about Black Lives Matter. This is no longer about a virus. This is all a concocted plan by Satan because he wants to pull you off track. He wants to take the message and the viability of the gospel of Jesus Christ away. Can you comprehend how dangerous this moment of time that we're living in, but what an exciting time this is to live in because we literally have the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ shoving us down the road. I hope you realize this today. I hope you realize where we are at at this very moment. This dark agenda is trying to eliminate the voice of God and the voice of the church today. David says this in Psalm 59, verses 13 through 15. Listen to this. Consume them in wrath. Consume them that they may not be. 
and let them know that a God rules in Jacob to the ends of the earth. And that at evening they return, they growl like a dog. And they go around the city and they wander up and down for food and they howl if they're not satisfied. Think about that. Can't you see that today? Can't you see that in the cities of Portland and Los Angeles and New York and Chicago and all these major cities? People are not satisfied. They're not satisfied with anything. They're growling like dogs. They're looting. They're burning. And David says, oh God, do not let the wicked reach their objective. Let them not be satisfied in their sins. God, guys, I need to be, remind you, we're not here to stand against people. You're not to physically fight people in the flesh and blood, but you're to fight in the spiritual realm. We are to fight for the souls of men and women, and we are to pray for them in the power in the name of Jesus Christ. We know that people's hearts are open to darkness. We realize that people's hearts are open to wickedness, and this is where we stand today. But you and I, we wield so much power in the name of Jesus Christ How many of you are praying today? How many of you are praying for the cities of Portland and New York and Chicago and all these places where there's looting and burning? How many of you are praying for those people who are godless, who are literally moving away from God? And David says, God, you know what? Don't let this happen. Don't Don't let them be satisfied in their sin. I hope that you're praying that God would send to the state of Ohio, to this area, to this nation, and to this world, a spiritual awakening. Let those who are gripped with wickedness not reach their objectives. Let their hearts be empty. Let them not be satisfied in what they are doing. Let them seek God. Let them come to Jesus Christ. Let them hear the truth of Jesus Christ in their life. Folks, we need to pray that those who are walking in darkness will be delivered through Jesus Christ. Amen? You need to pray hard. Don't just get mad at them. See them in a different light. See them through the heart of Jesus Christ. Every person who is a believer needs to call out to God, not just once or twice a day, but we probably need to spend hours on our knees every single day. But I want you to listen to what David does in Psalm 59, verse 16. He says, but I will sing of your power. I love this. Yes, I will sing aloud of your mercy in the morning, for you have been my defense and my refuge in the day of my trouble. David's like, you know what, God, no matter what happens, I'm singing of your power. God, your mercies are awesome. I'm going to sing of that. Here's the thing. Weeping might come at night, but there is joy coming in the morning. Amen? And that's what's going to happen. So let these people growl. Let them growl. Let them march and let them parade. Let them loot and let them burn. Let them do their debauchery or whatever they want to do. So as Psalm 59 verse 17 says, Oh you, oh my strength, I will sing praises for God is my defense my God of mercy folks we keep going right back to God do not get sidetracked with the news do not get sidetracked with the message of this day do not get sidetracked in the culture do not get sidetracked with the political realm you go back to God you go back to God and if you keep going back to God you're going to find so much strength and power you're going to have more power than you could ever expect or dream of so as God's people We're going to sing of his praises no matter what happens. Amen? We're going to sing of his praises no matter what happens. We are going to continue to meet. And I'm going to tell you this. If a day and time comes ever again, this church will never shut down ever again, no matter what is mandated from this government. So we are going to continue to meet. We are going to continue to pray. We are going to raise our voices high to the Lord in this place until the day of victory is won or that God literally brings us home with him. That's our objective today. I like what Mark Devers once said. He said, we have an incredible opportunity ahead of us if we stand strong and pray. If we throw our lives in our prayers and believe that God is merciful. As a Christ follower, he can use us to reach this world with truth, with mercy, with God's love. It's time to stand strong. It's time to cast every thought upon the Holy Spirit's power and trust him. Amen and amen. I agree with that 100%. Ephesians 3.20 tells us this. Now all glory to God, who is able, through His mighty power at work within us, His power at work in us, not your power, His power, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Your thoughts and your power is limited today. God's is not. God's is not. 
So you're going to ask, but God's going to go way above what you ask for if your heart is, in, is right with him. Do you believe that today? Do you? Because I do with all my heart, soul, and mind. And I'll guarantee you, somebody in this room or somebody watching really doesn't believe that. You're like, that's a nice thing to say, but I truly, honestly believe that with all of my heart. I don't know what you're praying for today, but I've been praying that people are going to find God. I have. It's an everyday prayer. I've been praying that people's lives will be changed by the message and the power and the gospel of Jesus Christ. I've been praying today that people would turn from their sins and turn and walk in righteousness. I've been asking God that He would send His Spirit to sweep across this land, to sweep across the state of Ohio, and specifically more this area, that He would move and we would see the power of His might move. I've been praying that moms and dads would come back together. I've been praying that marriages would be restored. I've been praying that children would find their security alone in God. I've been praying that addictions to alcohol, drugs, sex, and pornography would be healed finally in the name of Jesus Christ. I am praying, I am praying, I am praying for a sweeping revival to come across this area and to come across this land like we've never seen before, that God's mighty word and power will be heard over the voices of the lies today. Now, I will be honest, some people think I'm naive. I know that. Some of you have told me that. But you give me one reason why I shouldn't believe God's word and God's promises. Give me one, just one. You can't find one because every time God's word is true, every single promise of God always happens. There's some people in this room or maybe watching this morning. You see what's taking place in this culture with the virus and the stats and the hot zones and masks or no masks or Republicans or Democrats or Black Lives Matter or cities burning or whatever else is going on. And you can quote off all those stats because you watch and you listen and you read all the time about that. But I have one thing to ask you today for those of you who are putting your stock in that. Have you forgotten who God is? Have you? Have you forgotten who God is? Because many of you in here and watching have forgotten who God is. Have you forgotten that heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool? Have you forgotten that God chooses the weak to do his work? That God chooses the poor? That God chooses those who are pushed away? That God literally chooses the nothing to bring nothing? That everything that stands in its own strength? Have you all forgotten who God is today? Have you? Don't forget him. Do you think God needs your strength and power do you think God needs your natural abilities? No, God needs nothing from you but your heart. That's all God has ever wanted. He needs nothing but an openness of your heart so God can be God in your life. So put away your junk. Put away all your past failures. Put away your bad feelings about yourself and somebody else because none of those things matter. Do what David did and call for the garment of praise and let God literally speak in your heart and let His powerful Holy Spirit dominate who you are. Stop looking at what you can't do and stop listening to the lies of Satan. Look up. Start tapping into the power of God. Get your nose into God's Word and start following what God wants you to do. There is a weak people in this room and watching today who are going to rise in these last days. I know it. I feel it. I just know that God is going to make them rise. Now, you might be sitting here thinking today, Craig, you don't know how actually weak I am. You know what? You're not dead. You're not dead. Spiritual awakening does not happen until you actually open your eyes. And some of you here and watching need to open your eyes. Romans chapter 13, verse 11 tells us this. It's high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Folks, we need to recognize that God is still God. And you and I are not any weaker than any of the saints of the past. The Israelites, the people in the Bible, your, your generation of people, rolling back four and five generations, we're no weaker than what they were. Here's the thing. God tells us this. God says, open up your mouth and I'll fill it. God says, open up your heart and I'll be your God. God says, open up your hands and I'm going to use them. But it's time for those who have been living and walking in weakness to rise up. 
And folks, there's some people in this room and there's people who are watching who've been living in weakness and fear. It is time for you to wake up. It is time for you to rise up. It is time for you to keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. It is time. It is time for the church to stand on her feet again through the power of God's Holy Spirit living into us. And we come together combined. You imagine the power that we're going to be able to have. It is time, folks, for you and I to stop disagreeing with each other. We disagree over the stupidest things. It's crazy. I've never seen anything like it. It's time to stop that. It's time to stop that. It's time to put all your bad feelings aside. Be a grown-up. Be an adult. Be, in a, be a mature Christian and adult and put those feelings aside. Start speaking the truth to your family. Start speaking the truth to this world. Start speaking the truth to where you work and to where you go to school. All that matters is that people come to know the Lord Jesus Christ one by one by one by one. Do you understand where we're at today? Come on, folks. I'm begging you. This is the fifth week. I'm begging you. Some of you are not getting this. I can tell you walk out of here. You're not getting it. It's time for you to rise up. It is time for you to wake up. It is time for you to wake up out of your spiritual sleep and wake up out of your physical sleep and put your eyes and your focus upon the living God. Amen. That's what we have to do. Colossians 2 verses 13 and 14. Being dead in your trespasses, and the uncircumcision of your flesh. He has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. Listen to this. And he has taken it out and of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Oh my goodness. Amen and amen. I'm going to ask you to just bow your head and close your eyes with me, if you would, for just a moment. Father in heaven, it is my prayer today that you would not just sweep across this world and this nation and this state, but I'm going to make it more for us, that you would do a spiritual awakening with the RCC people who are here and who are watching. God, that you would do a, a spiritual awakening right here in central Ohio. God, that we would help bring people one by one by one to the name of Jesus Christ. God, that we would stop fighting and bickering each other on, with, about face masks on Facebook and, and on social media, that we would stop bickering with each other about things that take place in church, about things that we like, about things that we don't like. God, forgive us of those sins because, God, that's exactly what they are, their sin. God, please, please help us. God, we are nothing without you. God, we want to wake up. God, we need you. So God, today I am just lifting you up in prayer and asking for your spirit, a spirit of revival to sweep across the people in this room and who are watching. God, give us your strength. And God, we have all this power today because of what Jesus Christ has done on the cross and because of what Jesus Christ did when he walked out of the tomb. Thank you for that. Thank you, God, so much for the power of the promise of your Holy Spirit. And it's in your name that I pray. We're going to continue to worship this morning in just a few minutes by taking communion together. And as we do that every single week, we reflect on and we remember the sacrifice that Jesus Christ has made on our behalf. And, and we reflect on and we remember the sins that he has saved us from, the sins that we have been forgiven from personally. And we worship through this time. And so as we just prepare our hearts to do that this morning and to take the emblems that represent Jesus' body and, and his blood that was poured out for us. May we sing this next song as our prayer to say, God, give us clean hands. God, give us a pure heart. May you remove any idols that we have placed in front of you. But may you be the only one that we are worshiping. So let's make this our prayer as we just prepare our hearts for communion this morning.
So give us clean hands, give us pure hearts, let us not lift our souls to another. Give us clean hands, give us pure hearts, let us not lift our souls to another. your face, O God of Jacob. O God, let us be a generation that seeks, that seeks your face, O God of Jacob. We bow our hearts, we bend our knees. Oh, Spirit, come make us humble. We turn our eyes from evil things. Oh, Lord, we cast down our idols. Give us clean hands. Give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to clean hands, oh God, give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Oh God, let us be a generation that seeks, that seeks your face. Oh God of Jacob, oh God, let us be a generation seeks your face, O oh God of Jacob. Give us clean hands, give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Give us clean hands, O oh God, give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Oh, God, let us be a generation that seeks, that seeks your face. Oh, God of Jacob. Oh, God, let us be a generation that seeks, that seeks your face. God of Jacob, oh God of
As we close our time out this morning, let's just continue to worship our God and give him the praise for who he is. Let's continue to worship him through song right now. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. You are good, you're good, oh, yes, you are good. Oh 